Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Michelle. In this video we are going to discuss the feature of creating a class from the administrator's point of view. Let's go ahead and log into the administrator's portal. Once logged in, let's navigate to classes on the left hand side. This takes us to the classes and rosters page where we can add a new class on the top link. So let's go ahead and click on add a class. Notice at the top here it says request new class and that is because we are logged in as both an admin and a family. If we want to proceed to create a class from the administrator's portal we will need to click here to log out of the family portal and refresh this page. So let's go ahead and do that. Once we log out of the family portal it now says create a new class. So go ahead and give your class a name. You can also give your class an ID number. That just helps you to filter through your classes in different areas of the website. It is not, it's optional, it's not required. Just below that we have our subject. You can choose the subject for this class. Again, this is optional, it's not required. If you don't have any subjects that are populated here yet, you can go to the top and click on add a subject. If you click on the add subject, it will come up with a warning that says Clicking here, this process requires navigating to a different page. Any changes you've made on these three tabs will be lost, and it asks you if you're sure. If you spent a lot of time here and added a lot of information, I would suggest hitting cancel, and then finishing up creating your class, saving it, adding all of your subjects, instructors, locations, and academic year, coming back into your classes, and editing them. Just below that we have a coordinator email address. By putting in your instructor's email address, this allows them to receive the updated roster daily, once a day, during registration if there's any movement in the class, whether there's registrations, whether there's um, cancellations or wait lists, um, and it all is dependent on how you have the settings set up here under classes. You can also put in another coordinator's email address that may not be the instructor, but someone in the group that's just keeping an eye on the registration. If they want to see those daily coming into their email box, you could put a second one or a third one in here and just separate it out with a comma. Just below there we have some check boxes. The enable class on classroom dashboard is defaulted to be on. This gives the instructor the ability to see their classroom dashboard from the instructor's viewpoint and from there they can go into each of their classroom home pages. The secure class form, you can go ahead and check that off if you like to allow your instructors to communicate with the students and the parents of the students in the class. And just below here we have grade and age. These again are optional but you can put in what grade the class pertains to or the age group, either one or both of them. And you can restrict the class by grades or by ages, meaning anyone who's younger than that would not be able to come into the class. So we'll just go ahead and pick some grades here. And maybe we'll add some ages. Just below here, you can add an instructor. When you click on add an instructor, a, a teacher's name will be here. Again, if you don't have instructors in this drop down list yet, at the very top of your screen, you can add an instructor, but again, you'll lose everything if you do it here. So you can wait, come back to it and edit it, and go over to our, our instructor link here after you're done and add your instructors. You can also give your instructor a name and you can add more instructors here or assistants or um, someone that's going to maybe take attendance. So you can add more if you want to. These fields here are pretty much self-explanatory. Again, location academic. If you don't have anything in these drop downs, it's because there's nothing in there yet. One of my suggestions for location is to actually put the classroom that they're in as opposed to the place that they're meeting at. Um, so by putting in the location here of the classroom, when the students print out their schedule, it'll be listed on there. Check the days of the week that the class meets, um, your start date, what date you're going to start in, and then the end date. 
that you're going to be ending in. You could put the start time in. And then your matrix. Now, if your matrix was not created yet, you can leave this alone and not do it. You can put your matrix in later, and that's what we're going to do right now for this video. We're not going to put it in a matrix. Just below the matrix, we have the class description section, and this is where you can put the description of the class. The instructor can also put the description in here for you from their class homepage. Before I hit create class, I'm going to scroll back up to the top because there are two more tabs. So if I click on registration, here at the top, we could put the max amount of students that are allowed for that class. You can put a minimum students need it. And then the max parents allowed is if you allow your parents to register as a helper. So this is where you would put the max parents. If you leave it blank, it'll be set to zero. The minimum students date means that if you have a minimum students needed for the class, so maybe this instructor will say, I'll do it if there's four, but if there's less, I'm not going to do it. You can put a date in here of when you want the class to close if the minimum students are not reached. And then the sign up start date and time. If you're not using the sections to stagger your registration, then go ahead and use the sign up start date and start time. But if you're using the staggering feature through your um, members' sections, then you want to leave these empty because it will not, the staggering won't work if you put it in here. And then, of course, a registration deadline. You can close the class at a certain date, and you can put a deadline in there. Viewable signups allows your members to see who signed up already, and you can allow a waiting list. If you allow a waiting list, anyone that's put on the waiting list, the system will not automatically move them to a sign-up status if there's any cancellations. So if there are any cancellations, you will need to manually come into the roster and change the status of a waitlisted student to a sign up status. And just below here we have a reminder message that can go out several days prior to the first day of class. So this message will only go out one time and you as the admin can choose this or the instructor can do it from their members portal, their classroom homepage. Scrolling up to the top we'll click on the last tab finance. At the top you have the payment schedule and category. If you allow your parents to make payments for their fees, you will need to use the CRRP category with it. It is the way you have it set up under settings on your finance tab that will depend on how your classes are set up here. We do have a separate video on creating CRRP payments. Just below category, there's a checkbox for when applicable. If you check that, the parent will be charged a fee for the class that they sign up for. And just below here, we have various categories where you can charge a fee for your classes. These categories are set up by you under your settings link and under the payment tab. If you have more than one account that your parents can pay into, you'll see that under each category fee. You can choose your general fee or any instructor that is going to be receiving the fees from your parents. Once you're finished filling out all three tabs, you can scroll down to the bottom, click on Create a Class to save your changes. If you have any further questions regarding creating a class, you can contact us by creating a ticket and asking for training on creating a class. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel.